Hello Tekken fans, I'm here to discuss a little bit about Lars today. Season 3 is amongst us and I wanted to create a little bit of Lars content because I really feel like it's lacking and there isn't much out there right now. So here's a set of me playing against a Claudio and it's going to be me giving a little bit of commentary of some of my decision making and some of my adaption. There might be some things I could be doing better during the set. And I'm just going to see how this works out. And hopefully you enjoy the set and the commentary. For some reason he's randomly crouching right there. That was a bad punish on my part. But hey, free launch for me. Now, notice that usually when I end my combos, I end with a, you know, silent entry three because of the positioning that it gives me. You know, that extra one or two damage I get from silent entry one really isn't that big of a deal. So I generally go for silent entry three into dynamic entry two, that little gut punch. And, you know, if they do anything but tech roll, they're gonna get like hit by that so generally they're gonna have to stand right after dy dynamic entry three and once I've established that they need to stand that's usually when I when I start uh, uh, applying my mix-ups all right I'm not I'm not one to toot my own horn but come on guys Tell me that's not sick. It's not super consistent, but it's always amazing when dynamic entry properly goes under a high. It's it's quite a sight, right? So this is one of the reasons I use dynamic entry, because of the high crush, the, da the darting in, and occasionally you get this to happen. Now right there was just some good uh, gameplay by my opponent right there. He just totally outplayed me and figured out what I was about to do and capitalized on my frustration with a very, very uh, uh, proper with punishment. Round one, fight. Right there you see me end my combo with Silent Entry 2 instead of Silent Entry 3. It's another strong way to end your combo because it gives you some powerful OP options. If your opponent holds back, they'll get right back up and forward forward 1 plus 2 will hit any option that they decide to do if they decide to like mash after the wake up. And if they don't, it allows you to get in your uh, mix ups. And he gets me, and surprisingly, no grab break. Obviously, um, not breaking that grab has gotten to me. You know, here he is, just you know, doing four three on me, and I'm not ducking it because I'm I'm some trash. And he's doing a, a minus thirteen string, and I'm just staring at him. So I I need to like regain my composure right now, and it really is not working quite yet. I gotta I gotta hit the defensive.
yikes. He steps to the right and gets my back to the, on that one. Um, one of the weaknesses of the dynamic entry approaches is that you can really step it to the right. So, with that in mind, you should probably keep the dynamic entry 1-2 in the tuck because that has some really strong tracking. So, it just depends on your preference and the situation, but be be worried and get ready to get sidestepped if you're too predictable with those uh, entries. Round one. Fight. And there I am starting with the dynamic entry one plus two approach, even though I got it sidestepped last round. And I guess that's probably one of my uh, odd qualities. I sometimes do the same thing multiple times if the opponent counters it, just to see if they did it like purposely or if it was just like a fluke. And if they can do it multiple times in a row, I'm like, alright, I gotta, I gotta cut this out of the set. But if I, if I can still get it in, I'll probably occasionally throw it out. Here my opponent did the very smart move of ducking my dynamic entry approach and considering 6 out of the, no sorry, 4 out of the 6 attacks at a dynamic entry can be countered by ducking, ducking is a pretty good option. Very very strong gameplay by this Claudio, just watching me, spacing me, whiff punishing me, you know just, just making me look like a complete scrub. But. I'm about to find my footing in a second. Okay, I won't lie, I mashed that, alright? But I was expecting him to do some type of, you know, low or high or something to try to counter hit me. And in my opinion, that up for 3 is like a shitty, you know, Shreyuken. So, I hail married it. Sue me, okay? So, due to Chris Claudio whiffing some of his attacks and me blocking some of them, I was able to make him a little bit hesitant and throw out some of my parallels and really control the pace of the game. And luckily Lars has those parallels, so he can really just, you know, hit a couple and then fall back if he wants to. And then that's kind of what I do here. And I'd say the only really calculated thing I did was the constant silent entry after while standing two. And you know, since I did the transition every single time, uh, the final while standing two I did, I finished the string and got a counter hit and took the game. But if I were to supposedly, you know, do the transition, I probably would have gotten launched. So mixing up your while standing two into, you know, the whole string, back, the four transition, you know, all of that really makes it one of the best moves in Lars's arsenal. So, use it, guys. So, I'm not quite sure what he's doing in the beginning of this round, but one thing I can tell from this set is, well, I already knew this, but holy crap, the slightest step to the right really blows up dynamic entry. Like, damn. He's not capitalizing off of it every time, but it's definitely destroying the stance. See? That right there is why I like his uh, armor move. The, the follow-up. He tried to get up, but he didn't block the low fast enough. 
and he got hit. As you can see right there, that's one of Lars's specialty. He has like mid-screen mix-ups, you know. So I do that that the dynamic entry one, and the dynamic entry one has a follow-up that some people want to duck. So generally, people don't swing immediately after the first hit because they can be counter-hitted by the second. So they either wait or they duck. So you go into silent entry, and then essentially you have another mix-up: the mid, the low, or the or the mid launcher and you know because people are you know what dynamic entry one will cover so quickly and it also has a fast follow-up you get to you get to cause hesitation and use silent entry after dynamic entry one as an additional mix-up it's, it's, it's a pretty powerful tool when used on occasion so right here I go ahead and uh, use this air grab here not very often used it's fairly easy to break if our if it's still the same as Tekken Tag 2 but uh, once you get the grab in, it leaves you in quite the advantageous position you know and you can go into full crouch and do the full go for a full crouch mix up or you can just do a stomp uh, it's a pretty good move so do not completely forget about it because it can also just uh switch sides with you switch sides with the enemy on on the wall if they uh if they break it so it can help you if you are back in the corner as well round one fight now at this point uh, I'm not quite sure what Dre is doing because he's just kind of uh, throwing out strings and randomly crouching. But uh, handily take this these these first two rounds. There's probably not too too much to dissect from here on out. It's just Dre making some really bad decisions. You know, finishing strings, doing too many lows. But uh, the one thing is that uh, Ford 2-4 leaves the opponent in a very great range for the follow-up dynamic entry 2. So it's just like silent entry 3 combo ender. You know, if they do anything ex aside from getting up, silent entry 2 will get the counter hit. So they need to get up right after Ford 2-4 or they either get hit by the 2 and when they get up, they get they can get hit by the dynamic entry 3-4. So it's like, you can't really stay on the ground against Lars after a lot of certain stuff because he's just gonna flip you over with the dynamic entry too. It's such a good Oki tool. If anybody knows anything about Lars, dynamic entry 2 is deadly. The takeaway for, uh, for me in this set is that if I catch people stepping my dynamic entries and not trying to attack me out of them, I might have to go into silent entry and try to catch their sidestep right and maybe try to attempt that a little bit more because when I'm when they step to the right, even to the slightest, almost every move whiffs so badly. So that's my takeaway from this set and hopefully you guys took something away from it as well. Maybe some tips, maybe some tricks. And uh, thank you for watching and listening. More content on the way.